If you're an existing sole trader or partnership business and are thinking of converting your business into a limited company vehicle, then keep watching. In this video, we'll go through what exactly is incorporation of a sole trader or partnership business, why would you want to incorporate your existing business, an overview of how the incorporation process works, and finally, capital gains tax and incorporation. Before I get into today's video, be sure to hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell to make sure you're kept up to date with all of our latest content. This really helps us to produce more helpful videos and to get you free quality advice from real qualified accountants. Incorporation can be looked at in one of two ways. Either a new company and business is formed from scratch or an existing business, normally a sole trader or partnership, is converted into a limited company. In this video, we focus on the latter where you already are trading as an existing sole trader or partnership business. Your existing business will likely to be already have clients and customers, a revenue stream, possibly tangible assets such as laptops, computer equipment, fixtures, stock, vans, and other tangible assets assets using the course of your business. Some of you may even have commercial properties such as a building used as an office or a place where your trade is carried out. And there is also the matter of what is known as intangible assets. These are things you cannot feel or touch but could have intrinsic value such as your brand, customer list, relationships, supplier relationships and so on. These assets are usually rolled up in what is known as goodwill when a business is incorporated. Before we continue with today's video, we're thrilled to be launching the Accounting and Tax Academy membership site early next year. We'll be posting downloadable resources, tax tutorials, and in-depth courses that you can't access anywhere else. And the best part is it's absolutely free to join. Head to the link in the description box below and register your interest today. Now, as a sole trader or partnership, you might be perfectly happy in the way you are running your business, but there will always be the question, should you convert your business into a limited company? Here are three key reasons why you may choose to incorporate your existing business. Number one, you personally could benefit from limited liability protection by operating through a limited company. Your personal assets will no longer be at risk. Number two, extracting a salary and dividends from a limited company for personal remuneration is often more tax efficient than the income taxes and national insurance you pay as a sole trader or partnership. And number three, finally, a limited company is often perceived as more prestigious than a sole trader or partnership. And if you're contemplating further selling your business to a third party in the near future, then perhaps this could prove to be advantageous. Of course, there could be other non-tax or legal reasons too, but what you should do is weigh up the pros and cons of doing so before you make a decision. Now, we've already done a sole trader versus limited company comparison video, so click on the card above to watch this. So once you've made the decision to incorporate your existing business, then your next question will be, how does it work and what is the process? Unfortunately, there is no linear answer here. Each case is different and needs to be assessed individually as there are different methods and tax reliefs that can be utilized. Now, going through every step of the incorporation process is a full-on video in itself, so here we'll give you a broad overview. First and foremost, you need to understand the bigger picture. Your sole trader or partnership business is an asset you own, and like any asset, for example property, when you dispose of it, it can give rise to a capital gain. In other words, you make a profit on the sale, and therefore, in the world of UK tax, capital gains tax will rear its head. And you, as an individual sole trader, or if you are a partner in a partnership, are a separate legal entity to a limited company in the eyes of the law. So your existing business can be incorporated into a limited company in one of the following ways. Number one is in exchange for shares. All or part of the assets, including tangible assets and intangible assets, such as goodwill of your business, are disposed of into your new limited company and you, the business owner, receives shares in the limited company in exchange. Number two, in exchange for cash or a loan account. Ordinarily, if you were to sell your business to a third party, you may receive cash, whether in full or part for your business. This concept of incorporating your own business is no different, although it's unlikely your new limited company will have any cash to pay you. So that's where the loan account comes into play. Number three is by way of an outright gift. 
or number four, a combination of all of these. So let's look at a simplified example. You're a sole trader and you've been trading for two years now. Your latest numbers reveal you make profits before tax of £70,000 per year and you hold about £100,000 of tangible assets including stock, a van and some computer hardware. Let's assume the £100,000 are your net assets and your business is not VAT registered. For the reasons stated under the Y section, you have decided to incorporate your business using method one in exchange for shares. So the first step is that your business needs to be valued. And this is another procedure altogether. Let's assume your business was valued at £150,000 by a professional such as your accountant. And this amount will be known as the total consideration. Now, it needs to be emphasized how important this step is as significantly over or undervaluing your business can have adverse consequences. But the value of the net assets that will be transferred into your new limited company is £100,000. So there is a difference of £50,000 and this will be reported as the goodwill that is being transferred to the new limited company. So you as an individual now becomes a shareholder in this new limited company. And in this example, a 100% shareholder. You would also become a director of your company in most cases. Now, there are other practical points like informing your clients and customers that they are now dealing with a limited company. So you will probably have to amend your sale contracts and agreements to reflect this. And the same goes for suppliers of goods and services to you. Payment should now be taken and made through the dedicated company business bank account and not your old sole trader or personal bank account. And you will want to consider wrapping up the legal and accounting affairs of the old sole trader or partnership, like officially seizing and declaring it as such to HMRC. Now, from an accounting and tax point of view, there is much more to consider, especially given there are tangible assets that are being transferred. If your sole trader or partnership business has minimal or no tangible assets, then the incorporation process should be a lot more simpler. And finally, there is a matter of potential capital gains tax on incorporation that you need to be aware of. As mentioned earlier, incorporation could potentially give rise to capital gains tax as effectively you'd be disposing of the assets in your existing business at what is known as a deemed market value. The three main reliefs are section 162 incorporation relief, section 165 and 260 gift relief, and finally section 152 rollover relief. We'll be continuing our series of sole trader to limited company and covering more points and useful knowledge to help you make an informed decision as to whether you should incorporate your existing business and how it would work. So click on the bell notification icon to make sure you are alerted when we release these. I hope this video has helped you gain some more clarity around incorporating your existing sole trader or partnership business and taking you one step closer to knowing your numbers. As always, let me know in the comments your thoughts on today's video or if there are any topics you'd like us to cover in the future. Finally, be sure to like and subscribe as this does really help us to get our content out there. This is Tony D'Angelo for the Accounting and Tax Academy. Thanks for tuning in.